All right, here we are again. You guys are interrupting my little vacation away from YouTube. I've been seeing a lot of very strange ideas spiraling about carburetors and specifically about ignition timing. And so I kind of decide, well, I probably need to sit down and go through this and kind of dispel some of those untruths or, you know, whatever you want to call it. Things that are believed out there in the world that aren't necessarily true about carburetor engines and ignition timing. Shed some light on how things actually work. And then, you know, if you're equipped with a better understanding of how things do function, ultimately you're going to have a better command of that knowledge and you can apply that to your vehicle and get a lot more performance out of it. So with that, let's jump right in today. channel today I'm Uncle Luke here on the YouTubes Thunderhead 289 and today we're gonna look at some um, ignition timing related things where I can tell there's a lack of understanding that's being perpetuated out there on the internet and it's really doing you all a disservice as far as maximizing the performance and tune on your engine now a lot of these issues with ignition timing will manifest themselves seemingly in a way that makes one think that they have issues with their carburetor. So they'll just monkey like crazy, band-aiding left and right, the carbureted side of the tuning spectrum, when in reality, from my experience, carbs are exceptionally forgiving. Very, very forgiving, as long as you're relatively sized correctly, which I do recommend using a CFM calculator, you know, and be honest with yourself. But if you're within somewhat of the ballpark, Carburetors are extremely forgiving, okay? But ignition timing is not. If you fall short on the ignition timing on your tune there, you're really going to feel it in that seat of the pants feel. And overall, you're just going to be disappointed with the overall performance of your engine. So today we're going to just really take a hard look at ignition timing so I can help you understand, you know, what its intended purpose is. And then, you know, you can apply that knowledge to your vehicle and get the most out of it. So, you know, I'm making this video because I've seen some really strange stuff about vacuum advance, but to understand the purpose of vacuum advance, we have to understand what ignition timing is actually trying to do. So in its simplest sense, all we really want to do is fully ignite the cylinder charge right as the piston is just rolled over center on the connecting rod and it's starting its descent down the cylinder on the power stroke. Anything later than that, you're leaving a lot of power on the table. Anything earlier than that, you're also actually leaving power on the table. Too much advance, just as bad as too little within a spectrum. And you know, you can also put holes in your piston, which is very unsavory. So we don't want to do that either. And so, you know, what does this come down to? What affects our ignition timing? You know, why is vacuum advance, as you see here, here's our we got our rotor off right now. You can see our mechanical advance. If I can not have wiener arms and hold this. Here's our mechanical advance. Why is this separate than our vacuum advance mechanism? And why do these work independently? So you can see our centrifugal advance by our weights and springs, which basically the faster the distributor spins, those weights based on the spring rate will spin that out and actually advance this mechanism. But also, you have vacuum advance, which is based off of engine vacuum, which will advance the lower advance plate here, as you can see. Which is, again, changing that relationship and advancing the ignition timing. So, I'm gonna try and explain the purpose of vacuum advance here. As easy as I can and simplify it. But ignition timing largely bases all around cylinder pressures, at least from a vacuum advance standpoint. If you have more pressure, you have a denser charge of air and fuel particles, you know, that mixture is going to burn much faster. 
Now, if you have a less dense cylinder charge, that's going to burn much slower. Now, how do we see this manifested in the real world? Okay, well, on a blown supercharged engine, we have what's called boost retard. We're pulling ignition timing because we're cramming more in there. You know, that's going to ignite and burn much quicker. Now, on lower compression engines, we'll see that they want more ignition timing because it's a less dense cylinder charge, less cylinder pressure. That flame propagation, when you ignite the mixture, is going to be much slower. Okay, and so that's why they take more timing. So let's look at this from a standpoint of just say you have a static engine at 9 to 1 compression. Okay, why do we have variable degrees of ignition timing uh, based on the dynamics of that engine in particular? So to understand what vacuum advance needs to do, you need to understand that an engine itself is basically a glorified air pump, okay? When that piston goes down the stroke, it creates a low pressure area, and all around us is atmospheric pressure. So it's just trying to cram its way in there. So at sea level, we have like 14.7 or 14.5. I don't know, I'm not like a physicist or you know some science guy, but it's quite a bit. And so your carburetor, your throttle blades, actually work as a restriction to that. So at lower throttle angles, you know, got a lot of junk here sitting on the bench today. This is very convenient. So when you're cruising around, you don't have a lot of throttle on the carburetor, okay? Where are our throttle blades? They're not open very far. So basically these throttle blades work as a restriction to that air trying to cram its way in. And so this manifests itself, you can kind of look at this restriction manifesting itself as vacuum. So the higher the vacuum the engine has, you know, the more restriction and essentially the less we're able to cram in there. And so what have we learned about quantitatively how much we're getting into an engine as far as cylinder pressures? and basically the densities of those charges. Oh boy, we're using a lot of science words. Just stick with me here. So when you're at low throttle angles, you're not able to get as much in the cylinder, okay? And so those particles for that same volume of the cylinder are farther apart. It takes a lot longer for the flame when you ignite that cylinder charge to jump from one fuel particle to the other. They're farther apart, so it takes longer. So to get that mixture to ignite at the right time in the stroke, we need to fire that mixture sooner than if we were at hard throttle. And so there we go. There's vacuum advance. It works off of vacuum. When we have higher vacuum, we're adding timing through our vacuum advance to account for that lower throttle angle and that less dense cylinder charge. Okay, so that's why it's needed. When you're cruising around, you don't have a lot of throttle in the engine, okay? I mean, you have quite a bit of restriction going on there. Your cylinder charge is much less dense. And so that added timing helps you with not only efficiency, but throttle response and overall engine health, because, nice. If you're overfueling and doing a lot of different Band-Aids, uh, especially if you're firing your mixture too late, you'll experience higher uh, engine temperatures, which folks often complain about, and then we look at it and they don't have any vacuum advance or anything. It sounds ridiculous, but if this piston is farther down the stroke, you're exposing more of that cylinder wall to that ignition heat, and it actually correlates to higher engine temps, and it's very undesirable. So you can overheat on the interstate cruising and different things. And if you're experiencing that, Look into your ignition timing, you know, you might be a little on the late side. And so that's kind of the basis of ignition timing. So let's review one more time. So basically timing is based all on cylinder pressures and the density of the charge. Now Holly will tell you that, you know, a lean mixture burns slower and a rich mixture burns faster. Yes, that is true. But if you look at it from the spectrum of how much you're actually getting in the cylinder based on your throttle position. You know, quantitatively, at a lower throttle angle, it's a much less dense charge, rich or lean, doesn't matter, than if you're at wide open throttle, you're getting a lot 
uh, volumetric fill in that cylinder, all those particles are closer together and it's a much faster burn rate. So low throttle angles is a less dense cylinder charge. You need more timing for that to be effective. Less cylinder pressure in those scenarios. High throttle angle, you know, you're really towing into it. You're trying to rip around. You got your girlfriend in the passenger seat who doesn't like cars, but you brought her along anyway because, you know, you thought it'd be impressive, but it probably wasn't. But anyway, you know, when you get on it really hard, you don't need all that extra timing to burn the cylinder charge at the right time so that vacuum advance drops out at that point. And again, a solid, uh, I guess, reasoning behind this methodology. Just think of a blown supercharged turbo engine. You're pulling timing based off of boost. Boost is just getting on the positive side of atmospheric pressure. You have more force than atmospheric pressure, okay? And so those cylinder pressures are higher and you have to pull timing to burn the mixture at the right time, which should be a solid thing, indicator here, that more timing does not mean more power. Again, it's the right timing. And so, you know, again, lower compression engines, they like a lot more timing. Uh, and we're talking about not only static compression, but dynamic compression. And I'll leave a calculator below for that. It's something, if you build engines, you should really be familiar with dynamic compression. But, you know, Lower dynamic compression, the cylinder charge is much less dense, and you need more timing for those. Lower compression engines are going to take more timing. So with that, my friends, like I said, that's an aggressive simplification of what's going on here. But if you have any questions or comments or want to look into this further, leave a comment below. I'm pretty responsive. Or, you know, if you want to get pretty in-depth, I run a Facebook group that has about 10,000 people in it now. Thunderhead 289 Carbon Engine tech and tune forum where, you know, just for my own sake, it's a lot easier to communicate back and forth with you there as well. So anyway, I got to get back to work. This stupid beetle engine, you know, I got a lot of work to do on it yet and various other things. It's looking pretty wild on this countertop. So need to get things cleaned up and rolling. I'll see you for the next one.